Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we are going to explore hooks. First we are going to go through the introductory concepts of React hooks. Immediately after we will dive deeper in hooks and further improve our knowledge with not one but two demo application projects we are going to refactor to use hooks. The best way to learn something new is to do it in practice, so that's exactly what we are going to do. First project is going to be a demo application that will fully cover all of the most important React hook concepts. So in here we have an application that is fetching real data from an API. It has two different endpoints, posts and to-dos. When we click on one of these buttons, it fetches the list of different posts or to-dos. This application provides us with two different functionalities that we can use to explore really important React hooks concepts. One of these is state management. In here, we need to manage the state of all the current uh, resources and we need to manage the state of the currently selected endpoint. So all of that state management will be done in functional components using React hooks. And the second most important concept is lifecycle methods. Since we will be fetching data from a real API, we will have side effects. And till now, those side effects have been solved by using lifecycle methods in class-based components. But in here, we will learn how to use useEffect hook to actually deal with this uh, lifecycle methods. Also, we will talk about hooks in general and all of the most important concepts that you need to understand to use hooks and why are we using hooks in the first place. So, as I mentioned, first we'll go to some theory, then we'll get to this app and the second app will be the app that maybe is already familiar to you. The most recent video on my YouTube channel is this YouTube clone application. In here, we build this whole YouTube application that actually fetches real videos from the YouTube. So if we type something like YouTube clone application, it should give us my first video, as you can see here. So if you haven't watched that already and you feel like you need some more projects to work on with React, this is a great video to watch. In here, we build a whole application and currently we are inside of this project. So it's really amazing that we can actually watch the preview of this video inside of the video itself. So we are right here. So if you feel like you need to add another project to your portfolio or you feel that you need to solidify your knowledge of React, feel free to go ahead and watch this video. Uh, but if you haven't and you don't feel like you need to, there is no need, I'll provide you with the code and then uh, we are simply going to refactor this app to use React hooks. So this is actually a real use case scenario for React hooks. So without further ado, let's go to some presentation and then we'll go to using hooks in those two demo applications. Okay, let's talk about the current state of React for a second. So if we wanted to give a quick overview of different possibilities current React components offer us, we could summarize it simply. Class-based components are smart. They offer state management and lifecycle methods. Function-based components, on the other hand, are quite stupid. They practically don't do much other than return some JSX. Every time that we write a functional component and we figure that we might need to use state or lifecycle methods in it, we need to completely refactor it to a class-based component. Why isn't there a simpler way? Well, now there is. So now we can talk about what React hooks are and why do we need them. So what are hooks? Hooks are simply functions that let you hook into React state and lifecycle features from a function component. React provides a few built-in hooks like use state or use effect, but we are going to see all of them in our demo. Also, you can create your own hooks to reuse state behavior between different components. Another thing to mention is that hooks are just an addition. You can try hooks in a few components without rewriting any existing code and class-based components are here to stay. Introduction of hooks allowed reusing of stateful logic between components. This can be achieved by writing our own hooks that can be used inside of any components. For example, we can create a custom hook for API calls. Also, writing complex components will become easier. Many times a lot of logics are written in our lifecycle methods, making it difficult to understand and debug. Hooks instead allow us to separate this logic into smaller isolated functions. We also have a few rules. 
Hooks are simple, they are nothing more than a JavaScript functions, but there are two important rules that React Team imposed so that hooks can work properly. First rule is that we can only use hooks at the top level. Don't call hooks inside loops, conditions or nested functions. Instead, always use hooks at the top level of your React function. By following this rule, you ensure that hooks are called in the same order each time a component renders. That's what allows React to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple use state and use effect calls. Second rule is that we can call hooks from React function components. Don't call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. Instead, you can call hooks from uh, React function components and you can call them from uh, custom hooks. By following this rule, you ensure that all stateful logic in a component is clearly visible from its source code. To finish this little part about theory of React hooks, we can answer two simple questions. First, what is a hook? As we learned, a hook is a special function that lets you hook into React features. For example, useState is a hook that lets you add React state to function components. We'll learn other React hooks later. Also, when should I use a hook? If you write a function component and realize you need to add some state to it previously, you had to convert it to a class. Now you can use a hook inside the existing function components. So that's it for the theory. Now we can move on to our demo application. The API we are going to use in our demo application is JSON placeholder. In here, you can call it just like this. So JSON placeholder .com, and then we are going to call slash posts and it gives us a, a list of different posts, just a dummy data. And we can also call to do's and we get a list of dummy to do's with a user ID, title and stuff like that. So this is just dummy data that we can call just to check how we do API calls. So let's go straight into the coding and let's see how can we use React hooks in practice. We are going to start with refactoring this application. It is already built, the main functionality is completely built. You can fork the repository, the current code for this application in uh, this GitHub repository. I will leave a link down below so you can download it and then we can start transferring it to a hooks based component. Okay, so with that said, we can get back to our Visual Studio code. In here, you can run npm i for short or npm install to install all the necessary dependencies. In, the, in this case, it is just React and Axios. And after that installs, you can run npm start and your application should start on localhost 3000. And after that, you should see this application. So now let's get back to seeing the actual code and how can we transfer it to React hooks. So in here, it is quite simple. We have a simple app.js component and in here, we can see that we are managing state. So in the state, we have one property, which is resource name, which is simply a string of either posts or to do's. By default, it is set to posts and we have two different buttons. Simply said, the buttons have an on-click listener and when you click the button, they will change the state of research name to either posts or to do's right here. That's it. That's the, the whole complexity of this application. And after they do that, they change the state. We are passing that state as a property to the new component, which is called research list. If we command click on this component or just go into the components research list, we will see this component right here. So in here, we are also managing the state. Now the state are resources, which is an empty array at first. And then in here, in component dismount, this is a lifecycle method, which we will talk more about. And in here, we are actually fetching the data from this JSON placeholder API. And we are setting the state of resources to be equal to that response, that data. That is on first load. And every time that we change the prop, the research name, we are fetching it again. So in here you can see that if previous props that research name is not equal to current research name, we are simply going to fetch it again and set it up again. Right now I'm going briefly over all of this information, but when we start refactoring this code to hooks based component, uh, we are going to talk about it in more detail. So in here, when we set the state of resources, as we saw here and here, these resources will get filled and then we can use it 
in here, these that stay at resources, we can map over them to get a single resource and we can uh, get resource ID and resource title from it. And that will leave us with this nice list of different to do's. So that's the whole uh, complexity of this application. But the main thing to consider is that we do have a state in both of these components right here. And in the second component, we have lifecycle methods, two of them actually, with a lot of repetitive code. As you can see here, we are doing same thing over and over again. Uh, we are going to change all of this using hooks. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, we know that hooks can be used in functional components. So we are going to comment this component and we are going to create a new component called app and it is going to be an arrow function, so a functional component. We are going to copy this return statement right here because the actual JSX that we are returning is not changing. The only thing that is changing is the uh, logic of how are we managing our state. So we can do it right here and we can indent this properly. Okay, now that that is ready, we can start recreating this. So basically everything else, this is the same, but we have this state right here. So React offers one hook that is built in and we can fetch it directly from React. So if you type a comma here and then curly braces, we can extract more things from React. These are named exports. So in here, we can have a name import called use state. And if you type just use, uh, Visual Studio Code should fill it out for you. So in here, you can see all of the different uh, built-in React hooks. But the most important ones are use state right here and the use effect. We are going to explore this too in this video. So we are going to use use state right here to import it in our application so we can use it. And right now we can just type here and we are going to explore the syntax of use state. So first I'm going to write it out, it's one sentence and then we are going to go uh, one thing by one thing to explore how is it all set up. So in here we are going to type const and then an array. In here we had resource name, so we're going to copy this and type resource name. And we are going to type set resource name, okay? And we are going to make it equal to use state and we are going to type post. Okay, so for some people this uh, one line can look pretty weird and it indeed has some weird syntax. So let's just explore everything. Resource name is the first item in this array we are setting up here. It is a variable and it is the state of our application that we are going to use. So it represents the current state of resource name. The second parameter in our array is actually set resource name, which is a function that can change this uh, state. So in here we have a first item in the array, which is a resource name. So resource name is actually a current state property of resource name. So it just represents the current state of this property. Then we have set resource name which is actually a function that changes resource name. If that is not 100% clear right now, we are going to explain it in just a moment. But as you can see right here, in here we have a set state method that changes all of the state. But using hooks, we have this one special function that changes this specific state. And then we have a use state function. So we can type use state useState is simply a function that we get from React and it takes in one parameter. So we'll type it right here. Param is equal to initial state. Okay, now that we have all of this written right here, we are going to go one more time over it. We have current state of one specific thing, so resource name. Then we have a function that changes that state. Then we have a function that is that comes from React and that function is actually a hook. That hook takes in one parameter, which is initial state. So for the first time, resource name is going to be equal to post. But now let's explain this weird syntax of this uh, array. So why do we have an array? 
um, basically use state returns to things and it returns them as an array and we are automatically setting them right here. So this would be equal to this. We have an, an example array and this array, uh, for example, has one and two. So two simple elements. If we want to put this one in a variable, we can do something like uh, const first is equal to array and then the zero index. We can also do second, which is an array of the first index. And then if we console.log first and second, we should get one and two. So let's go to the console and do just that. So if we go into the console in the browser, now we will see some errors, but that doesn't matter because we are just refactoring this component. But the main thing in here is the console. So let's look at the console. We are going to paste this and we are going to console.log our first and we can also console.log our second. So as you can see, we get one and two. Now we are going to do it the second way, the more concise way, the same way that this use hook puts them in variables. This is called array destructuring. When we have an array like this, the second method that we can extract these values is using array destructuring. So we can simply type const and then first and second in an array equals to array. And this is actually going to fetch the first value, which is going to be this, and the second value, which is going to be this. This can be named anything. So we can literally type anything here and the zero index will be placed in this variable and the value of index one will be placed in this variable. So if we type first and second, and then we console.log first or second, as you can see, we get these same values as we did before. So this syntax is nothing more than simple array destructuring. Simply use state returns two values in an array and we are setting resource name to the first one and set resource name to the second one. So I hope that cleared some things about uh, React uh, use state hook. Right now we have resource name and set resource name and basically all of this is done. We can simply move it here and now we can actually call this resource name. So as you can see, we are in a functional component. We don't have this anymore. And as you can see, this, this can get quite repetitive in class-based components. Right now, we have this resource name in our global scope of this function, and we can simply remove this that state. And we are simply fetching this resource name. It's much more cleaner, and we do not have to repeat ourselves with this. Also, in here, we have this that set state. But right now, we can simply remove all of this, so remove it, and we can simply call set resource name and provide it with one simple parameter, which is just a string. And that's basically it. As you can see, we cleared a lot of this syntax right here. There is no more this that state that resource name. There is no more this that set state. We just have simple resource name and we have simple set resource name that takes in one parameter, which is just a resource name. So it is really clear, really concise, and really changes the way we write functional components. And now if we go back to our application, it should work as it did before. That's great. We just refactored one component and we learned how to use use state hook. Now we can get back to our resource list and learn how to do this. In here, the main thing that we are going to learn is going to be use effect hook, hook that replaces all lifecycle methods. So as we learned, we are going to import these hooks as named imports from our react and we are going to type use state and use effect. First, let's change this state right here. So we have state of resources and we can comment this all out. So we are going to comment it so we can maybe reuse some code later. But for now, we are going to comment and we are going to write a new uh, functional component. So const resource list is equal to an arrow component. And we are going to copy this return statement right here. So return and then we have this. We are going to remove these comments and we can structure it properly so it looks nice. Okay, that's it. Now we can comment this out since, since we currently do not have uh, this data right here. And now let's set this state. So as we learned before, it is simple as 
Uh, let's just copy this state right, right here so we can see it. So it is simple as typing const and then an array and then we, the name of our state variable. So we are going to call it resources and we are going to, by convention, call it set resources, the function that uh, changes this value. And we, simply we are going to call use state and we are going to pass the first uh, initial value of this resource state and what do you think it is going to be right here? If you answered an array, you're correct. First, we are setting our initial resources to an empty array because we are not fetching them yet. When we fetch them, we are going to fill this array out. So that's it, that replaces this, this, that set state. And now we can actually call use effect. But first, let's talk for a second about use effect. So we have two different lifecycle methods, component did mount and component did update. Component did mount is called in the first initial render and component did update is called in every other update. So we have quite some repetitive code. So we're going to copy this and we are going to put it in a separate function. Uh, so we're going to type uh, const, uh, let's say fetch resources is equal to an arrow function and in here we are simply going to paste this. So we have an await here, so this function needs to be asynchronous, so we are going to type async. Uh, if you don't know what async await is, I've made a great video explaining how to use async await in a real project, so you can check that video, it's not that long, it's around 30 minutes. A lot of people have said that that video changed the way that they perceive async await and that they finally learned it with it. So if you don't know async await or you still have some trouble understanding it, feel free to watch that video. But for now, we just need to know that we are making an async function and that we are waiting for our response right here. So since it could take some time to get the data from this uh, API, we are just waiting for it. And after it fetches it, we just want it to put it in a response. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, we do not have this that props anymore. We just have a property that is coming in here. And so this, this could be props and we could type it like props that resource name, but we can also destructure it right here. So we can type resource name right here and then use it without props. So we're going to put it here. And this function is going to take one parameter, which is going to be of resource name. And after that, we are going to set our resources right here, set resources, which is a function. It takes one parameter and we are going to fetch resources from this response and this is response.data. Now that we created this function, we can actually call it inside of our lifecycle hook. So as I mentioned, our use effect works for both of these functions. So it replaces both of them immediately. We do not have to be repetitive and copy our code. Uh, so we're simply going to type use effect right here, which is a hook to be important from React and it has two parameters. First one is a callback function, so an arrow function, and the second one is this um, array. And in here we put values we want to check if they changed. So if the value in this array changed, we are going to call this function. If the value in the array didn't change, we are not going to call it. Basically, this simple array with one value that we are going to put in here changes this whole uh, if statement. We do not have to make these ugly looking if statements anymore uh, because they are necessary for any component that update if the state mutates. Okay, so that's really good. Now we can simply uh, remove this, basically all of this, all of this component, and we can start looking into it more seriously. So one simple thing that we are going to do inside of the use effect is that we are going to call fetch resources and we are going to provide it with our resource name. And it looks like we have some error. Yeah, we cannot have an empty return statement. And in here, we can see that we cannot just uh, have this that state because we are in functional component right now. We can have just resources. Uh, React team actually create a linter. So basically a program that checks your code for errors where, while you're using hooks. Since they are new, they know that many people have been making some errors. So it, it automatically fill this array with a resource name property for me. So let's explain how this works again, now that we put our code in. So in here, use effect is a function that we take in from React. In here, we have two different parameters. 
first parameter is a callback function. So everything that is inside of this function right here uh, runs when this value changes. So for now, we have just one uh, function that we are calling right here. So if the value changed, call fetch resources, which will set our resources. But this thing is really important. So every value that is in here will be checked like this if statement that we had above. So we are checking if resource named, so it is coming from right here and from right here. So if we actually clicked on a button and if this value changed, only and only then call these fetch resources. What, what this will do is if we go back and if we check for our network tab right here in the Chrome console, uh, we can refresh to see it. We can see that we made only one request to slash posts. And now if we go into the to-dos, we are fetching to-dos right here. If we go to posts again, we are fetching posts. But what this is going to do is if we are currently on posts and if you type posts many times, you will see that nothing happens. No additional requests will be made. And that is good thing because we do not uh, want to make additional requests if we are not actually going to make any changes in the browser. So this checks whether the use effect or whether our API call needs to be actually called. That is really cool that in this three line statement, we can actually put so much logic and all of these things can happen behind the scenes. And now that we fetch these resources, they are put into this state. We do not have to call this that state anymore. And then the same thing as before, we are looping through them and we are displaying them in the browser. This is basically it for this um, little demo application. But there is one more simple thing that I'd like to show you and that thing is really powerful. In my opinion, that is the most powerful thing that React hooks offer. And those are custom hooks. We're going to explain it by writing a custom hook right here. So we're going to type const and hooks by default, as you could see right here, uh, start with use. So we're going to call it use resources. And it is going to be a simple function. And in here, we are going to copy all of this code right here. And we need to pass in one parameter, which is a resource name. And the most important thing that we need to do with custom React hooks is that we actually need to return these resources. So at the end, we will simply type return resources. Okay, now that that is ready, I will show you something really special. In here, we can simply type const resources is equal to use resources, and then we can provide it with a resource name property. And now, you can see that we extracted all of this logic from a component because th this can be used elsewhere. So why would we keep it in this component? As you can see, this component now has like 10 lines and we can clearly see that we are getting all of our resources from right here. If we go back to the browser and check if it works, we can clearly see that it works as it should. One thing that we can do more is that we can copy this and we can actually transfer it to another uh, custom hook. So we can create something like use resources and this will be the file of our custom hook. We can paste this in here and what we need to do is that in every file that we have our uh, custom react hook, we need to import react and we need to import all the things that we are using. So it is use state and use effect right here from react. Okay, that's great. And right now we can export it. So we can simply type export default and then we do not have to provide it even a name, but we can also do export default use resources. Okay. And we also need to import Axios from right here because we are using it in this file. And as you can see, we are now not using any of these things from React in this specific component, but we are extracting the logic in our specific React hook. So now we can actually import our use resources from that slash use resources. Now, if we go back and refresh, we can see that our app works as it did before. This is great because now if you want to do something like this, for example, create a new component called users. And if you want to render it in the application, we're going to list this users right here. So we're going to type users as a component. So users, 
and it is going to be a self-closing component and we are going to import it from that slash users. So right here. Okay, and inside of these users, we are simply going to render the users. So we can uh, copy this little uh, snippet right here of the whole function, go back, and now we can type users, uh, we can export the users, so export default users. So in one simple line, if we import this hook again, so import uh, use resources from that slash use resources, we can simply type users right here, change it, and resources will be users right now, and we can type a string of users. Now this fetches our users from this app, and now we can type users.map, and I guess they will have the title, or they will have maybe a name right here. So let's check it. We're going to check API from uh, this a bit later. So we also need to import React uh, right here in the users app because we cannot use JSX if the React is not close. And as you can see here, we are not getting anything and that is because the user has a name. So we need to map over the users and fetch that name and that is because we didn't specify it right here. So that was my error, my mistake. So user that name and now if we go back and refresh, you can see that we get a full list of users and we are getting that with one line of code. So this is great. We are fetching the whole list of users. We are making a request to the API. We are changing the state. We are doing lifecycle methods, everything in one simple line. So if you have something that you want to reuse right here, we, can, we are reusing setting state. We are using lifecycle methods. We are doing a lot of logic right here and we are simply uh, calling that in all specific components that we need to call that method into. So this makes uh, code reusability really awesome. So that's it for the custom hooks. And that makes code reusability really good. We can reuse a lot of logic uh, that we do not specifically need inside of our components. We can use it in separate files, which are custom hooks, and then we can import those hooks right here and set the state or anything that we need to automatically without cluttering our components specifically because they do not need to manage this state because it is used in many different other components. If you need to spread something like that to many other components, custom hooks are a way to go. So now that we learned quite a lot of this, let's take in not a demo application, but a real project that we're going to see how can we change it into React hooks. The second application that we're going to refactor is going to be our YouTube clone application that we built in the previous video. This is a project repository for this specific project. This is on GitHub and I will leave the link down below but this project is already updated to React Hooks. So if you want to follow along, feel free to watch the whole video and build the application yourself and then we can continue. Or you can simply uh, clone it uh, as a version already with React Hooks in place. So you can take a look around and see how it all works. Right now I'm on the older version of this application which didn't have the React hooks already created right here, but let's do just that. We are going to refactor this application to use React hooks. So right now let's go to the app.js component and in here we can actually import use state from our React. So we're going to import use state as we learned and we are going to change this state. We, ca we can see right here that we have two different uh, state properties. First thing that we learned is that we need to transfer this component into the function based components. So we are going to do just that const app equals to an arrow function. And we have some return statement down below. Uh, in here, we need to manage the state. So we are going to have two use state hooks. This is another great thing that you need to learn is that using hooks, you can use many different use state and use effect uh, hooks in the same component. So we are going to have const uh, videos as we have down below and we are going to have set videos. And that is going to be equal to use state and we are going to pass it an empty uh, array because videos in the beginning is equal to an empty array. And we are also going to have a state for currently selected video which is going to be called uh, selected video. 
and we are also going to create a function that changes that state called set uh, selected video. And that is going to be equal to use state and we are simply going to pass uh, null because we have currently no selected videos. Okay, after that we can simply return all this data right here, uh, all this JSX that we have right here. We are going to return it as we did before. Let's indent this properly. And now we can actually call this set videos and set selected video right here. We are setting it in the handle submit. So now inside of our app, let's create some uh, functions that we are going to call. We need a handle submit and handle video select. So let's copy this right here and let's put that right here so we can change them to normal functions inside of our function component. So we're going to type const something equals in here we have an async function and we are simply waiting for the youtube.get and we are sim simply setting the search term to be equal to the search term. And right now, since this is only a set state method, basically we are not doing anything else in here. We do not actually need it. And we can just specify this stuff right here. So in here we have this that set state, but now we are doing a lot of stuff here. So let's just separate this into two lines and let's see what do we actually need to change with the functions. So we have set videos and we have set selected video. That is quite self-explanatory. The simple thing that we are going to, to do right here is just we're going to type set videos and we are going to pass this property of videos and we are going to call set selected video and we're going to pass this, what was before, the selected video. And that's basically it. We are setting the state right here. And now we do not need to specify this, that handle submit. And in here we do not have handle video select anymore, but we can simply pass uh, set select, set selected video, and it will simply change the uh, value. And in here we do not have handle video select anymore, but we can simply pass set selected video, which is going to call uh, this and the video is going to be updated. So in here, I just missed, we need to get a first element. So selected video will always be a first element of this video's array. And now if we remove this uh, app component and if we check how it looks, we should refresh it and we should have no errors. Let's see, it is compiling and it is compiled successfully. And right here we can type something like JavaScript, for example, and we do get the data right here. So the app works as we specified. If we go to the search bar, uh, in here we have just one search term, so we can refactor this also. So regarding the search bar, what we need to do is we need to also import the use state from React. And basically we need to update this. So as we learned, this will become a functional component. So const uh, search bar will be equal to an arrow function. And in here we can simply set this state. We already learned how to do that. So it's const and then an array search term and set search term. and it is going to be equal to use state and the uh, initial value, which is going to be an empty string. Okay, and now in, in handle change, we are not calling this that set state, but we are simply calling uh, set search term. And we are providing it with a current search term right here. Okay, and regarding this, we can also refactor some things. So in the, we do not need handle uh, submit, but what we are going to do is we are going to check for submit on key press. So we're going to type const and we're going to type on key press, which is a function. It takes in an event and we are simply going to check if uh, event that key is equal to enter. So we are checking if the user clicked enter and in here we are going to type on form submit. Uh, right now you cannot see it because it was deleted, but it was called from our original app.js component and we provided it as a prop. So on form submit will be called in here. Okay, and we are simply going to provide it a search term. 
Now we can delete this um, previously handle submit and we can copy this return statement right here, remove all of this all together and we can simply remove this and put all of this in our component. Sorry if it got messy around here for a second. And we are going to return all of this what we had before. We are simply going to have a text field. No need for this form right here. So we are going to remove this and on text field, we are going to put these values in a row so we can, and we are going to add a value called on key press that is an event handler and we're going to pass it on key press which is just a function that we created right here also there is no more this so uh, this that handle change simply becomes handle change which we have specified right here and it is giving us error because previously it was a method so we could specify it right here but now we need to specify it like a constant as a arrow function so if we indent this properly now it should all be clear so let's let's structure this remove this and now let's check if it works and then we will explain what we did so we're going to type something like javascript and you can see that it works once again. So let's go through it one moment. Uh, we have this use state and we are setting the state of a search term. And then we have a handle change, which basically sets the search term based on the on change handler right here that we have in our text field. And then we have another function that gets called on key press and it simply checks if the key press is equal to enter. So if user plus pressed enter, and if so, you will call on form submit. And then our app.js will know what to do with this submit right here. Let's see if we need to refactor anything in the video detail. It looks like we do not need to because there is no managing state right here. And video item was already also a um, functional component. So there is no need to change anything in here either. That's it. Now we can look at the changes um, we made. So in here we have a diff. So this is basically a representation of deletions and additions we added to this file. So in here you can see, if you look on the right hand side, you can see that there is quite more deleted stuff than added stuff. As you can see, this whole block of red was removed and we added only this uh, few lines. Also this here was removed and replaced with this. This is just deletion. So as you can see here, our file uh, has a lot less stuff in it because we added React hooks, which makes it look cleaner. In here we had some uh, methods and also we had some state, component did mount, and in here we simply call use state two times and set these uh, videos and set selected video. In the search bar also you can see here that we have a lot of more deleted stuff than added stuff. In here we have a few more lines added as you can see here because this was all one line before. So if we return it to one line as it was before, you can also see that we have much more deletions and much more cleaner code. Uh, we simply added on key press and we are setting the form on enter and we are also handling the change right here. We do not have to call this that set state every time, but we can simply call set search term. It is really concise and clean. Uh, that is basically it that there is to refactoring this application. Okay, that's it for this video. We learned a lot about React hooks. First, we saw what they are in practice and when should we use them. And then we tried everything that there is, all of the most important stuff at least, to React hooks in the demo application, which is this application you're looking at right now. We also refactored that to use React hooks. That's basically it, we learned quite a lot. The next video I'm preparing is Material UI. So if you'd want to see a video about Material UI, feel free to let me know in the comments so I can create it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.